Hello, you are in the Institute of Crypto Anarchy. I am Camille. I'm hosting because I love you so much. This is my community and I keep coming back. Next, we have Tian. He's a digital product designer since 2015. He's worked on Circonomy, a DAO, all about circular economics. He's currently freelancing because he was laid off since January, but on the job market. So if you're hiring, let him know. This is Cyberpunk v. Solarpunk 2077. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Camille. Uh, yes, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Tian Wen, and welcome to my workshop all about visioning what a Web3-powered Solarpunk 2077 future should or could be. Um, before I continue, I just want to say we don't have a lot of people here, so please feel free to move up. And this is going to be, since this is going to be a workshop, you know, it's going to be interactive. So if you want to like move up, then that'd be great, but it's okay if you don't want to. Um, anyway, all right, I'll move on to uh, introducing myself. Um, uh, so, uh, yeah, Tian Yuan Zhao is my full name, but you can just call me Tian. I have a fact. My first name, Tian Yuan, has two meanings that uh, make it so that I was born to be here in Web3 because, so Tian Yuan means sky. And yuan means dollar, or the Chinese dollar. So poetically translate that to mean um, airdrop. <laughs> um, so that's one of the meanings. And then the other meaning is uh, yuan means uh, also uh, the origin of the universe. And so, uh, so because it comes from the center point in the Go board, um, you know, Go, right? Yeah, so that center point uh, means origin of the universe. In a way, you could also translate my name to mean shelling point. Um, so for those who are who know the refi world, Gitcoin, uh, you know how shelling point has become a major concept in that world. Um, anyway, so yeah, if you want to follow me, that's my Twitter and Telegram. Um, and yeah, uh, other pieces about me is uh, I've been an effective altruist since 2010. Um, before I became a concept, been in Web3 since 2015 when I first met Vitalik. Uh, and been in refi since 2019 when I attended the world's first refi retreat organized by Sal. Um and then uh, the reason why and how I got in to where I am today uh, is because of this big question that I came up with uh, for myself ever since I was a university student. And it's this question of how might we make the world a better place in a scalable, sustainable, and systemic fashion. Um, and so um, moving on. Uh, oh. Uh, uh, it's OK. I, I could just click. Yeah, it's fine. Um, thank you. Uh, OK. So. Um, uh, how I like got into where I am today, thinking about solar punk, uh, it all started way back when I was a student, um, and I, I fell into the world of social impact uh, the, with these three organizations as like um, places where I got to exercise that passion for social impact. Uh, so Engineers Without Borders is a nonprofit in Canada all about sending people uh, from Canada to Africa to help uh, the, the, the startups there, businesses there, uh, build and grow. Ample Labs was a tech nonprofit founded by a friend of mine who, uh, that was all about tackling homelessness. And then Share Change is uh, another fintech social enterprise founded by a friend of mine all about uh, microfinance. Um, and yes, they're not Web3, but uh, that was like the origin point uh, of my journey into social impact. Um, and then my uh, relationship with the world of refi and solar punk uh, was thanks to these three organizations. Uh, so with Ancelo, because I attended their refi retreat way back in 2019. Um, Good Dollar, uh, I worked for previously as their lead designer. Um, and that they're a crypto UBI project, uh, one of the first uh, to, to launch way back in 2020. Um, and then Raise is an African-based Web3 startup all about helping African uh, business owners uh, build and um, by tokenizing their businesses. And uh, they recently, I, I worked with them recently actually um, because, uh, so there I put raise, raise because, um, so as Camille mentioned, I'm freelancing. So I, I did a project for them where I designed essentially like an impact investment DAO platform for Raise. Um, and then uh, DeFi Current is another company I'm working for. They're not refi, but you know, like I said, I'm just freelancing because I was laid off in January. Um, and then the other two organizations, so Refi Toronto is a monthly meetup group in Toronto where I live and work uh, all about Refi. And then Circonomy is uh, this DAO that's all about circular economics, and I'll talk about that a bit later. Um, okay, so why am I passionate about the world of Refi and Solarpunk? Uh, I'm passionate about it because um, of this video game. Who's heard of it? I hope someone has. Nobody? Okay, all right. Um, uh, way back when I was a kid, uh, this video game uh, inspired my love for Refi, because, well, eventually, because... Um, this concept uh, where the characters go on this journey of world regeneration. 
um, and that it's basically a journey of saving the world. Um, but uh, yeah, so uh, how it works is like the main characters they have to go to this tower called the Tower of Salvation. They have to ascend the tower, wake up a goddess, and then they're supposed to save the world. Now, you might be wondering, how the hell does this relate to ReFi? Well, it turns out that in this video game, the world that the, the characters live in, um, this world is powered by mana. Uh, mana is like this concept that the closest approximation to that concept in our world is like oil. Um, it's this resource that uh, is used everywhere, right, uh, by everyone. Um, and so in the world that the characters live in, uh, it's called Silverant. Mana is low. So it's a... It's a not a flourishing world, not a prosperous world. Um, but they find out that there's actually another world that is a sister world living in parallel to their world. That world has a lot of mana, and so they're more flourishing, more prosperous. Um, and so when one world has more mana, the other world has less mana. It's like an hourglass effect. Um, and so how this relates to, to my love for ReFi and Solarpunk and, and our world is I think we live in a world where there is an hourglass effect, um, where uh, the global north, which is mainly the Western world, it, it is prosperous because um, it has taken advantage of the global south. Uh, you know, so, so we take resources from the global south and it, to enrich the global north. Um, and so not only do we have this division between global north and global south, but we also have this, we have also unfortunately created a world uh, or inherited a world um, that uh, of nature to create a bunch of artificial assets that uh, basically like essentially um, forms this other dichotomy of ecology versus economy, where we prioritize our economy over uh, nature uh, or ecology. So, okay, with all that said, uh, I've come up with three activities for this workshop. These three activities are gonna have these three questions of why Solarpunk 2077, where and how, and then what is uh, stopping us or what is it gonna take for us to get to Solarpunk 2077. Um, oh, okay. Okay, thank you, thank you. Um, all right, so. Uh, for the first activity, um, we're going to help answer this question of why Solarpunk 2077. So why did I call it that is because it's inspired by this video game, Cyberpunk 2077. Who's played this game or heard of this game? Okay, two, three, four, five. Okay, so for those who don't know what this video game is about, um, I actually have this game, but I haven't played it myself. Um, but, uh, or who would like to explain this video game's premise? Would anyone? No one? <laughs> okay, I'll explain. Okay, so the premise of this video game is um, in, the, in the year 2077, um, the world has no countries. The concept of countries do not exist anymore because instead of countries, it's mega corporations. They rule the world. And there's like half a dozen of these companies that rule the world with an iron fist, both literally and figuratively. Um, and uh, so, so they literally because they use cybernetic, in, cybernetically enhanced super soldiers to run the police states of these uh, of these corporate countries or corporate states. Um, and so, why does this matter? Like, uh, you might think this is so far fetched, but I don't. Whoops, um, I don't think it is because, you know, number one, why 2077? Well, you know, we have this concept called the singularity, and people predict it'll, it'll happen in 2045. Um, and it's like, yes, 2045 is not 2077, but you can imagine once the singularity happens and companies take advantage of that, they could potentially build a cyberpunk 2077 just a few decades later. I mean, and also, it's not far-fetched to believe that companies could become countries when we already have companies that, that you know, engulf the size of countries um, right now with all these big American tech companies uh, that, that are essentially corporate states already. Um, and, and so... Um, it, it matters for us to think about, uh, to, 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 to look at, sorry, to um, care about this because you know, we have all these movies, TV shows, and video games uh, centered with a cyberpunk aesthetic uh, or, or um, genre, right? And um, like one of the most famous, you know, we've all heard of Black Mirror. Um, and I think it's, it's, it might be entertaining for these movies, TV shows, and video games to exist, uh, but um, I don't think it's good for us to continue to always tell these cyberpunk stories. Um, and the reason for that is because of how human civilization evolves. Uh, so I came up with this model uh, years ago, um, and it's uh, basically, I, I think human civilization evolves through ages, and that, you know, I didn't come up with that, anthropologists did, right? We went from the Stone Age to the current age of information. Um, 
But I came up with the, the specifics of how, what happens within each age. So within each age, I believe it evolves in this way where we go from engineering to economics to environment, and then it rinses, lathers, repeats, so on and so forth. Um, and so what do, what do we each stage mean? So the engineering stage is the technological stage. It's the foundational stage of each age. That influences the economics, which is not necessarily about money. It's more about how we organize ourselves socially or how we determine value, define value. Um, and then, so that, that's basically all about the social constructs of that age. Then the economics stage defines the environment stage. And what is the environment stage? Well, that's, there's actually two dimensions to that. So there's the natural environment and the artificial environment. So, so um, based on the social structures, which is based on the technology, we have a certain impact on the natural environment of the world. Um, but we also uh, can utilize the social structures that are built on the technologies to create artificial environments, which is basically culture. Um, and so I believe uh, it rinses, lathers, repeats because um, with the stories we tell in every previous age, that influences uh, how the next age will be. Uh, because the stories we tell will um, inspire uh, what, that, what, what are the future technologies we create, the future organizations we create, and so on and so forth. Um, and so uh, given how I believe this is how human civilization evolves, um, if we continue to tell cyberpunk stories, then it'll be a self-fulfilling prophecy. Um, and we will eventually be able to build that cyberpunk future um, because it's self-reinforcing, self-censoring, and self-destructive. So what do I mean by that? If, if we continue to basically be negative, tell negative stories, um, and be pessimistic about our future, then um, it'll be all those things. It's similar to how if you're always negative, or if I'm always negative about my current job situation, then no one's going to want to hire me because they're going to think I'm, I'm this negative person and... Um, then I'm going to go down this downward spiral um, and I might end up uh, doing something bad and maybe killing myself or something. I'm, I'm not going to, but I'm just saying like that is a possibility, right? And so uh, I don't think we need, if, if we as a human race continue to tell these negative stories, it'll be all those things. So, um, and I believe that Web 2 is, is the path that if we continue to just um, enable Web 2 to, to um, get bigger and bigger, um, that will lead to cyberpunk. Uh, whereas Solarpunk, I think, is the ultimate or the end game of what we're doing here in the Web3 world. Um, and so I think it'll be something that'll be revealing, liberating, and constructive for humanity. Uh, and, and so here's a, before I tell you what the activity is, here's just a fun fact. I do believe, though, it's not all bad. Um, I think Western sci-fi especially has been very cyberpunk, cyberpunky, but in actuality, actuality um, Chinese sci-fi uh, has not been. Um, it's been more optimistic. Um, and why am I uh, only focusing on the relationship between America and China? Not, it's not only because I'm Chinese, but um, it's because it's been said that the, the most important relationship, geopolitical relationship of our century is going to be between America and China. So um, I think it'll be, it's, it, it is important to look at how, how non-Western storytelling uh, is happening in, in a sci-fi context. And so if, who here has seen Wandering Earth, for example? Wandering Earth. Okay, okay, my friend here. <laughs> um, you know, it features a story of humanity coming together, banding together to, to build, to make Earth into a spaceship that could fly away because, well, the sun is about to explode. Um, and so why does the Earth need to fly away? Well, we're going to move Earth to the nearest galaxy of Andromeda. Um, and then also humanity has been able to dig holes underground to basically put humanity underground because, you know, if the Earth is floating in space, it's going to be cold um, so, or freezing, and that's an understatement. Um, and so they've been able to successfully do that, right? That's pretty optimistic, right? Uh, and, and it wasn't just one human being that did all that. It wasn't rugged individualism that saved the day. It was uh, everyone working together to save the day. Um, and, and yeah, so uh, with all that said, the first activity, uh, oh, so by the way, uh, how I ideally wanted to do this is um, I would break all of you up into three different groups, uh, but each group will focus on one of the three activities. Uh, so we're not gonna do one after the other. Um, so uh, the first activity is, sorry, one of the three activities is basically about culture, about storytelling. Um, and so, the, you know, how might we green pill the audience is the question that I would like you to answer. And so how this activity is gonna work is you'll pick a medium, a TV show, movie, or video game. And why these three? Not, why, why not a comic book or why not a book? Uh, is because um, these visual mediums of storytelling, I think, is more accessible to the average user, the average person. Uh, you know, it's easier to consume a TV show, movie, or video game than a book uh, uh, because it just is. Um, yeah, like, 
I know that Gitcoin, for example, does have a comic book series that they've been running ever since they launched, but like I haven't even read their comic book. And like it's it's just hard to consume a, a reading medium, right? Um, so uh, you pick a medium, and then you pick a distributor, um, and then you pick your antagonist and your protagonist, um, and then you create a story around it. And then in your group, I would like you to also act it out uh, in front of uh, everyone at the end. Um, yeah. Uh, so we could we could figure out these groups later. Maybe I'll present all the three activities first, and then we could figure out the groups. Um, but before I move on, I just want to know like, who here already has an interest in this first activity of storytelling? Oh, we got these, <laughs> these two. <laughs> All right, okay, we've got three, three people who are interested. Um, by the way, who here doesn't understand the concept of green pilling? Or, like, or My do we... doesn't understand. Oh, <laughs> okay, okay. Um, so, so green pilling, um, was coined by uh, the folks from uh, Gitcoin uh, or Giveth. Um, there's even a podcast about it. Um, and it's basically about, um, like, so it, you obviously know what the Matrix was about, right? And there was this re red pill, blue pill concept. Um, green pilling is basically reveal revealing to people that there is this world out there of people who are building towards that solar punk future. Uh, like there are regens out there, there's refi, there's all this good stuff that's happening. Um, uh, but, but like the average person doesn't know that this good stuff is happening because mainstream media has flooded the news with bad news, right? Like most people out there, the average person thinks crypto is full of scammers and pyramid schemes. Um, and like I just recently saw John Oliver did another episode of cryptocurrencies and it's basically saying the same thing. You know, it's full of scammers. All thanks to SPF. Um, so, oh, uh, so, so, you know, with all this bad storytelling out there, um, we need to combat that. And so the way to combat that is by green pilling people. Um, all right, so yeah, so that's activity number one. Uh, and, and you can, and then I'll, I'll have you to scan this uh, if you wanna partake in this activity um, so that, uh, you know, I don't have to go back and show all these slides again. <laughs> Um, so I'll wait for you to scan it. Um, before I move on, any questions or comments? By the way, I know I'm speaking quite fast. Uh, I hope you were able to follow. Um, I just know that I'm just being cognizant of time. That's all. Um, okay, I will move on to the next activity. As the second activity is all about where solar punk exists. Um, I believe. You know, we have solar punk already today. Um, I've seen instances of it, use cases of it, uh, but it's mostly in the triple R of remote, rural, and roaming. Uh, it's mostly in these, yeah, remote, rural, and roaming places. It's an, uh, and I, I don't think that's good because, um, you know, where, where are the highest population densities uh, of the world? They're not in the remote, rural, and nomadic parts of the world, right? They're in the urban centers. Uh, and so I believe if we continue to just move I mean, if we, if we ignore the urban centers of the world, uh, then solar punk to me is an escapist's dream. Um, and I put these two books beer, here because, um, so this book is more touching upon the subject matter of how in this current neoliberal capitalistic world, um, there's a lot of people who wanna escape that. And so that's why uh, we have solar punk in the remote rural and roaming parts. Um, this book is not really related to why Solar punk exists in these three parts of the world, but this book is also about escapism, and it talks about how the rich uh, wants to escape the current disasters or the coming disasters of the world. Um, and so escapism is, is very much alive and well, and I, I, I don't think that's good. We, we shouldn't use escapism as a way to uh, uh, like cope with the problems of the world. Um, so where should solar punk be? I think it should be in the cities because two thirds of humanity will be in urban centers by 2050. Cities consume 75% of the world's natural resources and 50% of solid waste are emitted in cities and 60% of greenhouse gases are emitted in the cities. Um, and so we need to build circular cities. Uh, I don't know who here knows what that concept is or has heard of that concept? Okay, one not, oh, yeah, you have. Oh, you haven't. Okay. <laughs> um, all right. So a circular city is similar to the concept of a green city, if you've heard of that, um, or a smart city. But smart city uh, to me is like it's more of a Web two construct because um, I've seen the criticisms. It could lead to surveillance state essentially, right? But a circular city is all about um, 
harnessing the concepts and the principles of circular economics, which is uh, which has three core principles. I actually don't remember them at the top of my head, but at the end of the day, I'm just going to summarize it like this. Um, circularity is all about in, ensuring um, that the physical resources of our world are kept in a loop, in a constant loop, instead of uh, in a linear fashion, which they have been for the most part uh, ever since um, the supply chains of the world became global, became multinational. Uh, um, you know, we, we take from the global south and then we just like throw it back into the landfills of the world, right? Um, so, uh, Yes, and I know recycling exists, but like there's there's been recently a lot of um, information out there, knowledge out there about the fact, or research out there about the fact that recycling is broken. Uh, not a lot of companies actually recycle. There's a lot of greenwashing and so on and so forth. So, um, you know, we need to build cities that are circular. Uh, that's where, uh, so, and and the, this concept is coined by the Ellen MacArthur Foundation, who is one of the pioneers in the circular economics uh, world, um, or school of thought or whatever you want to call that. Um, and so you may have heard of the concept of the network society, or sorry, the network state. And then if you've heard of the network state, you might have also heard of, oh, yeah? No, no, I just have a point on BTS. I want to add something. Oh, oh OK. OK. Uh, I can continue? Or? <laughs> Sorry, I'm Julia from Crypto Commons Association. We was the group promoting the Crypto Commons framing and you were mentioning before. Yeah. Uh, and we have a solar punk hub in, oh. uh, in the Alps, Wonderful. in Austria. Uh, but I totally agree that solar punk should be more in the cities and less like in these micro communities uh, because the impact that you have um, building your own small communes in the, in the forest is so small yes. and all the big things will happen in the city. So. Yes. We should make city solar plant cannot uh, escape in the in the rural areas. Yeah. Yes. Amen <laughs> to that. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Um. And yeah. So. Uh. And then you know, obviously, if you're in Web three and you're thinking about city building or or whatever, you're gonna you're gonna gravitate towards this concept of the network state, right? But then, if you've heard of network state, you might have heard of the counter to that being network society or the coordination. Um. There has been some backlash towards that concept of the network state. Um. And it's primarily. Uh, Done uh, administered by this organization, uh, sorry, by this person called the Blockchain Socialist. Um, but he's interviewed a bunch of different people uh, over the last year or so, um, all about yeah combating that network uh, state concept. Um, and then inspired, so inspired by that, I came up with this concept called the Network Village, um, which is another spinoff. Um, it may, or it could just be another way to call a network society or, an, or a coordination. Um, but. Um, but actually, no, I will say that my, my concept is slightly different. Um, so inspired by overthrowing the network state and, and the existing coordination concepts and application, um, a network village, which is inspired by also the concept of the global village, uh, which is coined by Marshall McLuhan, um, uh, a, a thought leader way back. He, he passed away, but like he coined the concept of the global village, which was basically the, the idea of the internet before the internet became a thing. Um, and I think, you know, the word village conveys more of a sense of community. Um, you know, the expression, it takes a village uh, to, to do something, right? Or it takes a village. That's an expression that exists. I think it carries the right vibe. Um, and, and even the concept of a global village was all about interconnectedness. Uh, so I think that is a, is a better uh, name. Anyway, um, so what is a network village? So I think network village uh, should be about upholding cooperation over competition, similar to network society. Um, but the other three... Uh, are about interdependence and circularity. Uh, the third concept, third property is that um, similar to how uh, network society says you don't need to have physical land. Um, so I said physical land may not necessarily need to be purchased, but I believe a physical resource uh, must be governed in a commons-based approach. Um, and then uh, each um, network village will be a node and they'll exist uh, in an on-chain, or it, they will exist where that on-chain governance and activity could occur. Um, and so this is going to lead into uh, the activity. Um, so the activity is how might we make cities more circular powered by Web3 starting today? Uh, but, and, and we'll do that by forming a network village. Um, so the five uh, things, or so how do we do that is number one, pick a physical resource that needs circularity, such as plastics, electronics, or metals, clothing, or food, etc. cetera. Um, you must have some combination of software and hardware to ensure circularity is applied to that physical resource. You must apply on-chain mechanisms to manage and govern this digital commons. 
uh, fidgetal being a combination of the word physical and digital. Um, and then you must, it must be applied to a urban center or suburban center, not a remote rural, and it cannot be romantic, nomadic. Um, an example of a network village is, is something I came up with. Um, is centered on something called precious plastic. It's, it's this project that exists out there. It's a physical machinery that can break down plastic into tiny pellets. And so what if you had a network village that was centered on precious plastic, um, uh, which specializes in breaking down plastics in a pellet form, and it can be reused. Um, and so imagine each machine being a node in this network village. Um, yeah, so that's the second activity. Um, if you want to do this one, then scan the QR code. Hopefully we'll have enough time to even yeah. <laughs> do these activities. <laughs> I think we will. Okay, all right. Um, I'll make sure to move back and let you scan the other QR codes if you missed any. Uh, okay, so the last activity, the third activity, three for Web3, is all about politics and geopolitics. I know, it's a very touchy subject matter, but I think it's an elephant in the room that must be addressed. Um, so I believe... Uh, politically, uh, so Web 2 versus Web 3 is essentially about platform capitalism versus platform socialism. Um, so, respectively. So, essentially, I think Web 2 is all about platform capitalism. Web 3 should be about Web 3 socialism. And these are two books uh, that I think are they're companion pieces uh, that should be purchased to understand uh, what these two concepts mean. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it, it's already, I think, pretty evident that Web 2 is platform capitalism because, I mean, every... every Every one of these Web2 companies out there is a platform uh, that has become a SaaS product that just like monetizes your data, right? And um, it, it, that is pretty much the state of Web2. Um, and so uh, this leads us to asking the questions of what, are, what is SolarPunk's political leaning and what are SolarPunk's geopolitical implications? So politically and geopolitically, I think SolarPunk is left-leaning um, and then geopolitically, Actually, before I touch on that, so that graphic over there summarizes how these other aesthetics fit into the political spectrum. So we have Adam Punk, which I actually n didn't know about until I was preparing for this conference. Um, uh, but Adam Punk and Solar Punk are more left leaning, whereas Steampunk and Cyberpunk are more right leaning. Um, Adam Punk like Cosmos? Or <laughs> uh, sorry? <laughs> Adam Punk like uh, as Cosmos? <laughs> uh, What's that? I, I don't know, maybe. <laughs> Um, I don't but, think so. but yeah, so I, I think it obviously makes sense that cyberpunk is right leaning because it is very much so about propping up companies, right? Um, uh, and, and making sure that they're the king and uh, they lead and, and decide everything. Um, uh, I mean, the idea that a company can become a country, I think, is one of the most fascist concepts you could come up with. Um, What's the vertical scale? Um, honestly, I actually don't know. Oh, yeah. Probably, probably. Yeah. No. Or, or socialist. Um, and then on the right side is. I, I mean, so it says the, the horizontal is economic left versus right. And I would believe that the vertical is more, as you said, like. Or, Maybe it's more yeah, technological yeah. intensity. Uh, yeah. Because solar punk, cyber punk, more technological, oh, and the other. No, but so yeah, maybe, maybe that too. Yeah, so how t how much technology it is, and and then maybe it's also about like how much it, it like the the as you said, like authoritarian versus, uh, I guess, democratic. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, and then okay, so I'll, I'll move on to the geopolitics. Um, I think solar punk would align itself with the concept of a multipolar world more so than the current unipolar one. Um, so what, that, what those concepts mean are, uh, like, right now the world is, or the world has been unipolar ever since the end of uh, or World War II, um, or no, ever since the end of the Cold War, um, right, where basically America and the West is, is like the leader, they, they decide everything, they make up all the rules. Um, uh, the U.S. dollar dominance is a concept that exists because of, oh, yeah? No, I just wanted to add, I'm really loving the presentation, I really enjoy every slide. <laughs> I think in the crypto space, it's very um, frequent to 
go away from politics and just find your comfort in technological solutions or economic incentives. Yeah. So you don't have to think about all this shit that is going on and the fact that all the world is going right wing or authoritarian. And yeah. Yeah, I think we should include it in the conversation because all the technological and economic incentivization is good, but yeah, yeah. this yes. is quite crucial. Yes. Vital. Yeah. Agreed. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. What it's actually doing is Sorry, it's making it otherwise in the recording. <laughs> so, so my observation is maybe that Web3 is making, go, taking the world from capitalism in a way to hyper-capitalism, where it, what, what that means is today, capitalism is only for the people who are well-connected and already wealthy, yeah, right? Yeah. In the future, through Web3, capitalism is essentially accessible to everyone. So. Anyone in the world who has a great idea can, can basically propose it and it might get invested in and it could be the next big thing overnight, right? And I think, um, yeah, the reason I believe in Web3 is because I see it as the ultimate form of capitalism, getting rid of the problems as, you know, that capitalism has today, um, which in a way makes it more socialist, right? Like the, the concepts converge, but it's, I guess, it's a different way of looking at it. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I've heard, also heard that argument, and I, um, I, I believe that that is fine, too, if it's, like, truer to the ideology. But, um, I mean, as you said, if it, if it becomes more accessible to everyone, then it has the potential to become more socialist. Um, yeah, yeah, like, like may, maybe it's, um, it's not um, an exclusive thing. So what I'm talking about is a world where anyone can propose ideas and anyone can invest in other people's ideas. Maybe that covers a part of the spectrum. Yeah. Other things is we need public goods, funding, and structures, economic sense of structures that make that work, which is more of a, like a, a left concept. Yes. Yeah. We, we need both for sure. the solar punk world. Sure. Yes. I, I can agree with that. Yeah. Um, though I, I sh ah, shoot. Um, just wanted to say one final point about uh, the geopolitics side of things is um, like, uh, I, I think it just naturally makes sense that um, blockchain and stuff fits with multipolarity because of, um, like, look at how blockchain became, or where we are today with Web3, like, we have multi-chain, right? So multi-chain, multipolarity, pl plurality, then those are concepts that naturally align with one another. Um, and then, yeah, so I'll move on. Uh, just two more slides before the activity. Um, I don't know why it's not showing. Uh, I'll just, well, actually, okay, just to address one more thing about... Okay, okay, all right. Um, well, uh, I guess I'll very quickly just comment on what you said earlier, Mel. Um, I, I, there is also a book that's coming out, uh, though, about how, um, well, the, sorry, the title of the book, I think, is How Capitalism Ruined Blockchain. <laughs> yeah. um, sorry? You have the book? Yeah. Wow. Wait, it's out already? <laughs> Oh, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> sure, sure, okay, cool. Um, okay, so yeah, uh, sorry, two more slides very quickly. Um, I think, you know, uh, Solarpunk is and should be against a one world government. I wrote that because, you know, right now we kind of have a one world government and it's like ruled by the three pillars of America, that which being Silicon Valley, Wall Street, and Hollywood slash Broadway, um, but mostly Hollywood. Um, and, oh my gosh, this is awesome. Yeah, uh, blockchain radicals, um, how capitalism ruined. Okay, amazing. Yeah, yeah. sweet. <laughs> um, okay, and then why does this all matter? Because I think uh, the West is experiencing late stage capitalism and internationally, inherently, capitalism is imperialistic. Um, and I've touched upon all those things earlier already. So, uh, finally, um, inspired by this guy on Twitter by the name of Omni Harmonic, at Omni Harmonic, he created these propaganda posters uh, uh, to, to propagate the concept of solar punk. Um, and so the activity is basically to create propaganda, uh, solar punk propaganda. <laughs> um, uh, because, you know, um, I think we should fight fire with fire. <laughs> um, okay, so I know time is running short. Uh, not sure how to do this, um, but um, if, hmm. Well, let's just try to 
do this as fast as possible. Um, maybe maybe we only pick one. Actually, maybe that's the best way to do this. So we pick one of the three activities, and we j and, and we just do it as a as an entire group, or we break up into two different groups to do it or something. Um, yeah. yeah. So so let's let's do a quick vote. Uh, who wants to do which of, of these three activities? We got the culture one, the politics one, and the circular city one, or the network village one. I like this one. You like this one? Okay. All right. Oh, you like this one too? Okay. How about you? Or let's just. Okay. Okay. Oh, sweet. Okay. Okay. How about this? Fine. We'll try to we'll try to break it up. So, uh, Network Village, go over here. Um, uh, politics, go over here. Um, you mean that one? Yeah. Yeah. yeah this yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. Or, or propaganda, come here. Solar punk propaganda. Um, and then culture um, over there. If if you, are you, which one do you want to be? Oh, you're just listening. Okay, come on. Who? Yeah, come Participate, on. people. This is a workshop. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Okay, fine. So you want to be which which one are you? Politics. Politics. Okay, fine. You go to him then. He he's quite authoritarian though, so be careful. <laughs> Yeah, no, not yet. I want to. I, yeah, I did. I created the name. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Um, did you bring everyone under the hood? Under the hood? Yeah. Is everyone under, under some hood now? I, 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 don't, I don't know. I'm um, I There's some, still some people that are... You? What about you? You don't want to participate? Come on. Come on. Huh? Everyone has a everyone has an opinion about politics, yeah. Yes. Yeah, for sure. Well, if you scan this QR code, you're gonna see all the slides basically, and then. Oh, sorry. No, no, no. The slides to this activity. So this QR code so, will be for this activity. Um, nature aspect. And then. So yes. But I, I will come to you, each of you as well. Um, okay, so I guess we only got the two activities of network village and politics. Um, hello, you're new. Do you want to join? A group right now, quickly. Uh, okay, so well, so there's two activities happening. Two activities. One is about propaganda. One is about network villages. Okay. Um, so network villages is about like how do we basically create circular cities with with like Web three, basically. Um, which one sounds more interesting? And from us, you're expecting a poster. Sure, a poster is fine. Yes, even just one poster. Yeah. Maybe we can generic a video for you. Um, <laughs> yeah. So. Let me, let me summarize this one. Um, so this one is, uh, well, given the time that we don't have, um, uh, but I'll read it anyway. So if you're a political candidate for your country, what would your solar pump pitch be? Create the propaganda posters or headlines. If you were a United Nations representative, what would your solar pump pitch be? Uh, let's create a decentralized propaganda ministry and call it Propaganda DAO so as to propagate solar punk messaging like the following courtesy of Omni Harmonic. Tactics, uh, use some of these tactics like bashing, bandwagon, and bombastic. Uh, so what are they bashing? Like you can bash your opponents, bandwagon, join us, join us, don't join them, bombastic, be, be loud and be like, uh, uh, what is it, um, like a sensationalist. Um, and then inspiration, focus your messaging on either of the following, how we live, work, and play, our relationship with each other, machinery, and nature. Um, FUD, cells, let's create FUD about cyberpunk. Um, FUD is fear, uncertainty, and doubt. Um, maybe a good headline to inspire you is make earth great again. <laughs> um, <laughs> and then last but not least, let's be manipulative and persuasive, be rhetorical and personal, inclusive and emotive language and try colon. Try colon just basically means use the power of three. Like I, I've been using three a lot, right? I have three activities, three, this, three, that. So use the power of three, the magic number three. Um, and yeah, so this is inspiration. You could Google this guy or Twitter this guy, Omni Harmonic. He's created these posters already. Like, capitalism is a death cult. That's so bombastic. That sounds scary. Become a disciple of the living earth. Um, yeah, and, then Timmy and, and, and so on and so forth. I actually have uh, so so these are, this is so inspiration for coming up with. Uh, given that we don't have much time, if you could just create one awesome poster, that would be great. <laughs> okay. Um, or even, like, Several headlines, yeah. Um, and then on your side, I'll I'll go back. Um, so yeah, the, 
This is. Um, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yes. 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 You got it. Great. Thank you. Yes. I got it. I got it. Yeah. Great. Wonderful. Um, so yeah, you can just uh, uh, pick a. Let's go. Oh. Okay. More people. Hello. Welcome. Welcome. So you missed. Uh, this was not a talk. This was a workshop. Um, and you just came at the time where we were doing the activity. Um, so uh, wait. Uh, you, you're new. Come up I here. have a few ideas. Come on. <laughs> don't be scared. I don't bite. <laughs> um, so uh, there are three uh, you know activities. Um, right now, there's two groups working on uh, one of the uh, like two of the different activities. Um, one of the activities is about culture. One of them is about politics, which those guys are working on. One of them, and then the third one is about network villages, which those guys are working on. Um, so, uh, what do they mean? Um, I wish you were here earlier. I explained what they are. But um, basically, uh, the culture one is um, how do we tell solar punk stories? Um, Elaborate uh, on those stories, I mean, like points come up that with they a have pitch here. for yeah. a movie, mm -hmm. TV show. So or we could write down that, that a few things where. Do you know what solar punk is? Just a few aspects uh, about cooperation, competition, in, interdependence, and circularity. It's basically so a living in harmony uh, with nature. Any using points, for example, especially what cities are competing yeah. about. And so we do have solar punk so already let's within the world of Web3. Let's, let's um, keep our focus to one city. Let's just think out of the perspective of one city, not. Other cities can adopt what do. Okay, right now we are trying to solve the following problems, like um, how can we make maybe cooperation and competition a little bit more transparent? And that also means, I also mean the competition within our city. So, so, so yeah, the first one is about storytelling. How do we green pill the audience? You know what green pill is? Which department gets how much money? Are we investing more into our clean water systems or into our energy supply? And, solar and, and stuff like that. Basically, um, because right I now know because I work for the city of Munich, by the way, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. as an IT consultant. Sure. I know there's also like just a lot of like anti all of crypto this news out there, yeah. right? So like, but nobody more positive stories. Uh, we have a lot of like, for example, okay. Um, Um, okay, so uh, we're going to present very shortly. Uh, feel free to write still while I'm talking, um, but uh, I just wanted to put my last uh, slide. So um, how does all of the stuff that I've presented about uh, relate to my work? Or how does the workshop relate to my work? Well, um, as I mentioned, I'm working on something called Circonomy. That's uh, just like a side refi project that I'm doing. Um, and what Circonomy is, is uh, we're building a platform, enabling the creation of network villages. Um, and a network village, uh, best way that I've been able to sum it up is it's a Web3-based circular city framework. Um, and then in parallel, I'm, we're also trying to build a learn-to-earn platform for circular economy Web3 projects. And then last but not least is this product that I call Fine. Uh, it's a product to unify the refi world uh, or refi projects. Um, and yeah, so that's just a summary of uh, how my work is related to the workshop or versa. Um, okay, so uh, we're we're coming close to the end of this workshop. So I'm gonna have uh, the the team politics or team propaganda or team propaganda come make a make their presentation once they're. Are you ready yet? <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> um, all right. We'll give you. A wonderful. Wonderful. Thank you. Um, oh yes. No, wait, wait, are, are you ready to pr present anything, something? It's okay, it doesn't have to be perfect. Why don't you just pre present first? Yeah, yeah, come on. <laughs> if, did you, if you didn't, maybe we could just, are you cool with like Camille's idea? Okay, fine. Okay, given that we don't have much time, we'll just have Camille present her idea. I have way too many. I've seen uh, cons, uh, conference t-shirts and a 
just, uh, I would really like to create better outfits from this conference waste and wear them to the conferences or around because I know the clothes I wear are becoming more valuable as I wear them. And then have the articles of clothing represented on a blockchain in my closet, or the articles of clothing in my closet represented on a blockchain, so my girlfriends can trade, and I can sort of trade the tokens, but also, you know, trade the physical clothes. Because that's valuable to me. Wonderful. Awesome. So basically, circular fashion, uh, powered by Web3. <laughs> If you shimmy in the clothes, it makes them more valuable. Why? Your energy. Oh. Your skin follicles. Oh. Pro proof, proof of dance? Shimmy? Oh, I <laughs> wonderful. Okay, wonderful. That's great. Um, all right. Uh, Team Propaganda. Yeah, yeah, sure. P please bring your computer up here. Um, for, for those who were not here for my workshop, uh, so the ones that just trickled in for the next person, are you curious to know what you missed out on? Yeah? No? This guy with the mustache? Really? <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> oh, uh, or, no, you can just plug it in. It'll be easier. Yeah, come on, come on up. Okay, so for those who missed my, my workshop, um, it's all about how we can create Solarpunk 2077 starting today using a combination of culture, politics, and circular economics. Um, team over here is going to present their political... Uh, okay, come on. Come on. Yeah, come on, come on, come on. Come on. Um, they're going to present their propaganda poster that is all about supporting the Solarpunk vision. All right, um, yeah, uh, sorry, oh yeah, just, just unplug there and you could just unplug and you could just stick it on top, you could just place your computer on top and then. So we want to make Earth green again. We are the solar punk demo and um, if you get, if you vote on us, you will get a token and you can vote directly on the issues that we're voting on in the political system. And we think that we are about to enter singularity, as uh, Chen already said. And the amazing thing about that is that technology will enable us to move all industry off Earth. And uh, at the end of this century, we think that the solar punk world is a world where is um, nature has been restored and cities are these almost museums where just people live and all industry is uh, is on the moon or in low earth orbit or wherever else and um, if you vote for solar punk DAO um, we will make that happen all together and we will all own this future together um, so join us uh, make make earth green again <laughs> well done our team we, uh, we're going to win together. Yeah. <laughs> Woo. Thank you, Mel. Nice Thank you, Mel. Mel. But uh, I just have to do it with my Trump voice. Make Earth green again. <laughs> Caps on Chrome. Thank you. <laughs> this will be the greatest and best DAO the world has ever seen. <laughs> Trust me. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, thank you all for your time and for your participation. Uh, um, okay, I will let Camille introduce the next person, I guess. Hello, it's me again, Camille. You're in the Institute of Crypto Anarchy. This is Philippe. Please welcome him.
works. One, two, three. Okay.